Do you ever feel the insatiable need to change your operating system at 4 in the morning? Because that's what we're doing today, installing Linux on something completely unreasonable, the Nintendo Switch. And I'm going to have some macaroni salad for breakfast at 4 in the morning because life is meaningless and we should enjoy it anyways. Now, after the last one, we should have a general idea of how this works now. We need the charged Nintendo Switch. It needs to have at least like 45 to 50 percent charge. You're going to want that. God forbid you have something die in the middle of this process. It'd be really annoying. Two, we need a jig to boot the switch into recovery mode. And three, we need a way for the data to actually get transferred to the SD card initially. Now, it's not strictly necessary once you get it done the first time, but you, you do need it at least once. On the software side of things, we're going to need one, Hikate, the phenomenal aftermarket bootloader for the Nintendo Switch that lets you handle all sorts of things from US data transfer to just backing up your data. And two, the actual image of Ubuntu Jammy itself. I was going to do 24.04, but I've done this before, and when I was testing my 3D engine on 24.04, I did get markedly worse results. Now, I'm not sure why, and it's been several months now, so it could potentially be better, but I just didn't want to deal with those dragons. Is it Hikate? Hikate? Hey, kitty? Hikate. I have been saying that wrong for like seven years. Now, just like in the last video where we installed Atmosphere on the Switch, installing stuff on the Switch is not really like installing it like you would on a computer where you flash something onto it on uh, through the BIOS. It's more of just copying a file over to the SD card because we're booting actually off of the SD card itself, not the internal storage. You can boot off the internal storage, but it's a longer, more arduous process, and I won't be going over that today. And the only difference booting-wise is we're not going to use fusey.bin Integra. We're going to use Hikate's bin in the GUI itself to actually boot directly into the bootloader itself instead of Atmosphere. Knowing this, I'm still leaving the process on the side over there just so it can be followed along. Okay, now on the booting half. We need to have the switch plugged into a computer, and we need to get the jig in, just like last time, to short those pins. Holding volume up and pressing the power button should put it into recovery mode. Once it's in there, we can see we have the hey, Kate bin already loaded, and we can inject that and have it boot in on the switch. Now, in Hikate, we have a few things that are quite nice like the tools section where we can partition or backup or USB tools where we can even do the mass storage button here and actually just transfer files back and forth from the SD card without having to take it out. But what we're really focused on right now is we need to go over to partition SD card because in order to do this, we need to create the partition. This would be the time you would want to back up anything. If you had anything to back up, I don't really care. So. Now, we need to save at least 6 gigabytes of FAT32 storage here so we can transfer over the Jammy image file itself and have the space to keep it there for the flashing. But for the rest of it, we just crank that as high up as we feel like. I'm just going to be safe and leave 10 over there. This will partition the SD card. Yes, we would like that. SD UMS, you could click in order to just transfer the files immediately, but I'm going to go ahead and click Start. Safety wait ends now. Yes, I would like to continue. And there we go. So now that it's partitioned, we need to actually do the SDUMS and we need to pull over the files for uh, Jammy Jellyfish itself and put them on the switch. Now that UMS is loaded, we can see that the switch actually just shows up as a flash drive over here. We can just access the bootloader and everything or the bootloader folder and everything. So what we need to do is we need to go to downloads, get that jammy jellyfish thing, and pull it right on over. Copy, paste. Now that it's done transferring, we can just eject it on the window side. And you do want to eject, it is important. You can corrupt all the stuff on your SD card if you do not. Oh no, not format. Yeah, you don't definitely don't want to format. And on the switch side, we will see that it automatically detected we have done that. Now, since we have all the files here, we can just go ahead and click Flash Linux. Found installation files, continue. And this will probably take a minute as well, but 
Now that it's done flashing Linux, it even gives us the option to delete installation files. I mean, the partition's still there, so I guess it doesn't really matter, but we can go ahead and do that. There we go. And then, in more configs, we should see Ubuntu Jammy. Clicking on that, we should get the whole thing going. Resizing root FS, booting, sideways Ubuntu screen, Ubuntu, and there we go. It's it's booted. At this point in the installation, it's literally just a normal Linux install. You choose your time zone, you choose a language, you... Fuck, what else do you do? You wait. You do a lot of waiting. And then you get a beautiful Linux screen. Let's play games on it. This took so long to start up that the sun came up and construction started next door, so I'm actually recording this the next day. It took a while to get configured properly because I had to... The only way I could get an Xbox controller to even connect via Bluetooth was to install the XPad Neo driver from the, their GitHub, and then I had to connect... The, to it via the Bluetooth CTL command and the command line. Box 64 and Steam and Super Tux Cart took literally three hours to install. So, well, everything compiling from source on a Switch is not very fast, but you kind of get what you get when you screw around with a underpowered piece of hardware ten years later. I got a couple games downloaded, and I don't even know if they're going to work with the controller, but we'll try. We'll start with Half-Life. We'll see if sound even comes out. I don't know. I haven't even tried. I haven't attempted even once. I don't know if it'll work. Loading Vulcan shaders. We, I don't know if we want this. Surely Vulcan's not going to go too great on this piece of hardware. I thought that was more of New Age. Surely we can just skip that. Oh boy, we're in for a ride. This is probably going to take a calendar year to boot. Or it'll just work. Turn the volume up, and infinite loading screen. Oh, no way. Can we even get the controller to work on it? Options? Hello? Okay. Oh boy, this is chugging. Enable the gamepad. There we go. Nope. Enable. Why'd you disable yourself? I had you enabled. Oh, it's going to be one of those games, isn't it? Okay. It's freaking enabled. Apply. Nope. And it disables it. Okay. It is applied now. Holy cow. <laughs> Cancel. Leave this menu, please. Uh, I can't get out of the menu. <laughs> Hello? Oh, there it goes. Oh, man. We'll just load one. Fine, if that's the screen you're giving me crack effect is blurry in real life why would they do that i guess this was made to be ran on like a 480 by 540 screen uh uh oh no oh this is not good and the controller is not working Oh no! <laughs> that thing was loud. I mean, it kind of works. I can't walk around. Oh my gosh, I can. Do these Joy Cons work? They do, they just work. Oh no, what's going on? And why does he keep looking up? Every time I walk forward, he looks up. 
Okay, well. As you can see, the performance on even a more than 10-year-old game is just abysmal, so that particularly is why we use Moonlight. Would I recommend anyone do this? I mean, if you have a first-generation Switch and you have a bunch of time to kill, and I mean a bunch, and you just feel like it, then yeah, why not? But are you going to get anything out of it? No, you hardly even get a usable device. 